everything that you do vocally has to serve the drum. And everything that you consider in setting the text has to be something a character would say or wouldn't. The more I experience opera, the more I realize it's just this, it's part of this continuum of world of music that we have and that there's an amazing repertoire to explore there. There's an amazing breadth of, of what you can do as a composer in opera. For me, what I really love about opera is the idea of dealing with sort of everyday themes. And I think essential opera really um, kind of is in tune with that as well. Because it's an interdisciplinary medium by nature, you have to consider all kinds of different levels of things more, more than you would or in a different way than you would if you were just writing an art song or a choral piece or even an oratorio. The very first thing I sketched out, even before I had the libretto in front of me, was the leitmotifs for each character. For Regina, for Anna, and a leitmotif is something that signifies the entrance of a character, or an idea, or both, or a time or a place. Um, and I have uh, a theme on the accordion that's associated with the past, and um, Regina and Anna, the two main characters, each have their own little fragment melody uh, light motif that introduces them and um, the two light motifs actually um, sort of fuse at the end of the opera which is meant to indicate that the characters are actually meeting for the first time When I was originally thinking about this project, I knew I wanted to do something surrounding etiquette and Emily Post, and I, I knew it was going to be in three scenes, and I knew I had all this this text, and I, I had a feeling of what the characters were going to be like, but a lot of it just, um, once I started with the musical material, it started to develop on its, on its own. So, and that's kind of indicative of how I like to work anyway. I like to have a, maybe a general plan, but to be aware that things are going to change and the music is going to kind of tell me what it wants to do. If I feel connected to it and I see that the performer is connected to it, then I think that usually is enough to make the bridge towards the, the audience. I actually read through the text with the librettist. Um, we take on a bunch of characters and we just go for it and, and try to act it as realistically as possible. And then from there I go home and start kind of um, uh, wrapping my head around what are the sound sources in in this world. So in the technological world, I was looking at very concrete things, things like the startup chord when you open up an Apple computer is a C major. Uh, there's also the Facebook alert message sound, which is actually the notes F, A, C, and E. And so that's all through the opera as well. I like to write for the voice a lot, and even when I'm writing instrumental music, uh, I tend to think of vocal lines and the gestures of the voice and the breath. Also, I just feel that it's what comes naturally to me when I sit down to write. The gesture and uh, the line and the phrase are sort of informed by how I breathe in and how I sort of sing the line to myself. I went to a flea market in Charlottetown and I picked up the book Etiquette in Emily Post's Etiquette and it was this really old copy and uh, and I was really enthralled by the, the language of it and it seemed both so beautiful and charming but also a bit ridiculous. Um, but anyway, it always kind of stuck with me and then when I was going to be working with Essential Opera, it just seemed like the perfect the perfect topic. This particular project uh, really excited us once we saw kind of the potential, the multimedia component for example, we saw that as kind of a unique way of enhancing an operatic experience, it's sort of a play on subtitles. And so talking to 
teenagers that we know and just kind of getting a sense of what uh, kind of things they do use, things like Foursquare, things like WhatsApp, and then just kind of researching online just how people talk. <laughs> I was a camp counselor for many, many years, and it was something that I was very passionate about, is to prevent bullying. And I witnessed a lot of bullying as a camp counselor that was really kind of heartbreaking. So the subject itself was very serious to me. Um, the approach that we took, that Julie and I took, was to treat it at first as a comedy, then kind of pull the rug out, that like th there's a dissent from comedy, that comedy is a vehicle to speak about something openly that is very serious. I think opera is often perceived as uh, uh, an art form for only the rich or for the initiated. And essential opera are doing things to break down those barriers and to say that opera is for everyone. They're enthusiastic about new Canadian artists, performers and composers, and that's what got me excited about the project in the first place. Those are the people you want to work with, the ones who are kind of questioning things and opening things up. It keeps making me want to write even more. Oh,